What is your response? I help through problems and trials. It draws us closer to Christ, closer to God. But if you have the wrong attitude or the wrong heart about something, it, it will create a division. God is all powerful and he knows all things. And he loves all people. And he has a plan for all of us. Do you understand his plan for you? The Bible says clearly the gospel is for all. Here, once again, we want to read this verse. And he said unto them, the disciples, he said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, to every person. So here's the point. All power and all authority. Chapter 16, verse 15, A. A means, it's the first part of the verse. It says, and he said. Who is the he? The he this verse is speaking of is Jesus. Remember, Jesus, Christ, he is God. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Remember, in other verses, Jesus says, all power is given unto me. Remember God. We're speaking of God. We're talking of the Heavenly Father. And God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Jesus has received power, all power. Jesus has all power. Jesus has never lost any power. Say, so, oh, a long time ago, Jesus received all power, but then, you know, that power has diminished. No, no, that's not true. Jesus continues to have all power. What does it mean, all power? For example, Jesus can command, has command over nature, uh, command over the storm and it will diminish, or um, the sun can make the sun go dark. Everything. Jesus' word alone, he created the world the planets, the stars, the moon, the sun, and every person. Just with a, with a word, and it happens. He has all power. The second word in this verse is authority. Authority. It talks about his rule and his reign. When he speaks a command, it will happen. It will be so. For example, maybe you remember the story. Balaam. You remember the story of Balaam riding along, right? And the donkey begins to speak. How did that happen? Well, it's because, because God said it. So remember a person who was blind and Jesus healed him and he could see. Remember the person who was deaf. Through Jesus' command, the deafness was gone and he could hear. He can do anything. He has all power and all authority. He is supreme. He's not like in second place. 
So there's the Father's in first place, the Son is in second place, and the Holy Spirit is in third place. But these three are one. Their responsibilities are different, but they are equal. It's not like a big God and then, you know, he's the most powerful and then Jesus is a little bit below him and then, and then the Holy Spirit is below Jesus. No, that's not the way that works. They are equal. Example with a husband and a wife. Husband and wife are equal. They are equal, but their responsibilities differ. It's not, oh, yeah, the husband has more power and greater than the wife. Um, no, that's not true. They are equal. They are two humans who have come together. They are equal, but their responsibilities are different. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God the Father, yes. They are all God. They are all equal with different responsibilities. Jesus Christ, he is truly the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we need to obey him because he has all power and he has all authority and he has commanded us. We need to obey. And he gives us the opportunity to choose With animals, plants, whatever, you know, oh, animals and plants, they, they must obey him, but you and I, he has given to us the choice. Because he has all power and all authority. Do you understand that? And do you believe that? Do you believe that Jesus Christ has all power and all authority? Or do you think, well, Jesus, he's kind of, uh, he's kind of low. He's kind of, uh, you know, God the Father is supreme, but Jesus is not the same as God. Or maybe you think that Jesus, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's kind of God, but, you know, he's just like all these others, like Muhammad or Buddha or, you know, whatever. He's just like all of them. No, that's not so. Jesus is supreme. He has all power and all authority. He is supreme. But are you willing to obey him? That's the question. Or do you want to discuss it, negotiate, argue, rebel? No, we should just honor and respect him because he is supreme Now, this is to all Christians. And he said unto them, Go ye. You. <laughs> so Jesus is talking with the disciples. You understand the word disciples. There were 11 disciples gathered there. First Ecclesia. So there were 11 disciples gathered there. This is the first church, the first local church, the first group that had gathered together that Jesus called them. And Jesus says, go ye. How were they involved in the first group? First, because Jesus called them. And secondly, because they were saved. 
because they had trusted Jesus Christ. And they gathered together. They were the first group. And Jesus commanded them and said, go. Remember before when Jesus said, wait, wait, not yet, wait. But now Jesus is saying, now go, go, go now. Now is the time. And Jesus promised he would be with them until the end of the world. Also, that the Holy Spirit will be with them forever. In them forever. And his command was to go. And his command is forever. All power. Jesus has all power. And his command to us, all Christians, is to go. So I've got a question for you. Are you saved? Then you, then you can obey his command. Are you a member of a local assembly? You can be involved. You are involved in this. You're included in this command. And third, Jesus, he has all power and all authority for all Christians for all time. And he commands us to go to all the world, all the world. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world. Into all the world. Not just one area, not just one part. Say, oh, I don't want to go to that one. That part that's mine, I'll go there. But I'm not going to worry about all the rest of it. Jesus didn't say go to part of the world. He didn't say just go to your home, go to your people. To every house, to every area, to every city, to every country, to every nation, to every land, to every part of the world. Jesus speaks for all authority and all power to all Christians to go to all of the world. So I've got a question. Your church is, in, is involved with sending, has sent or is sending people. Are you involved in that process? The church group gathers. If you're not involved with a church group, then you're not involved in sending people to all the world. And if you're not doing that, then you're in rebellion against God. Those are the two choices. You yourself go, or you are involved in sending others. Now, I'm not God, you're not God. I can't be here right now and over there. I can't be in two places at the same time. I'm not God. But I can be here, and then I can send someone to go there, to far places, to far nations, to far places places in the world. I can be here and you can be there and we can be preaching the gospel at the same time. And in that way, obeying God. But if, I, if I'm here and I think, well, I'll stay here and that's just enough. And I'm not involved in sending people to other places, then that's in rebellion against God. I can go to far places myself. I can go and be there, but then I don't worry about what's going on here. That also is rebellion against God. 
Working together, that's the point of the local called out assembly. Every local church needs to be involved in this mission, contacting people, reaching people in your region and in the regions beyond at the same time. How? By sending people, missionaries. Soul win here and missionaries over there at the same time. That obeys God's command. And then we think, oh, yeah, I'm soul winning here, but I'm not sending missionaries. Yeah, I'm not going to be involved with that. Then that's rebelling against God. Or I'll volunteer and I'll go be a missionary over there, but I'm not going to be involved in missionary work here in this place. No, I'm just going to focus on that far region. No, that's, that's not obedience. All the world is what he said, not just part of it, but all of it. All creatures. And he said unto them, Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, every person. Preaching in their language. How? You got to study, and you've got to learn, and you've got to train. If if we forget God's word and we ignore God's word and we meet a person, maybe um, they speak English and we speak English, and you know that's just good. But if we haven't memorized God's word, how are we going to tell them? If we can't remember what the Bible says about something. How can we share it with someone else? I, I, you know, say, oh, well, I really want you to go to heaven. I wish I could tell you how, but, you know, I just, I forgot. I forgot. I'm sorry. But I'm, I'm going to heaven, and I'm happy about that. But, you know, and I know you can go. I just don't know how to tell you. You know, when you meet someone, you're both speaking, like, say you're both speaking English, both speaking the same language, and you've got the Bible there, and you can tell them about it and explain it to them in their language and my language. It's the same. That's, that's best, right? You know, you're deaf. You sign. The Bible is written in English. You meet someone who's deaf. They say, yeah, I'm deaf. You sign. Yeah, I sign. Uh, you, you understand English? And they're like, yeah, I, I don't understand English so great. So that's okay. I've studied and I've learned this English language. And I can tell you what this verse says. I can sign it to you and I can help you understand it. And verse by verse, you can go through explaining in sign language making sure that they understand each step of the way. Verse by verse, explaining in their language. And it's perfect. Okay, so now I've got a question for you. Do you believe these things we just talked about? Do you understand them and believe them? Yeah? And they say, well, I kind of sort of understand. Okay, so what part of it is, are you having trouble? What part of it? Are you having trouble believing? Do you not? Exp do you? And then you can explain a little bit more, communicate a little bit more, and help them to understand and help them to believe. Because knowledge is not enough. It's not enough to know something. It's not even enough to understand something. That's just the, the beginning. That's the foundation. They need to believe. So you explain and you help them to understand. Help them to believe. Help them to trust in Christ, not in you, but in Christ for salvation. Not in the church, not in the baptism water, 
but trust in Christ. Trusting in Him for salvation. That's so important. You and I, I mean, we can read and study and practice and, you know, and explain things and to try to help that person. And through this, we are involved in this command to preach the, the gospel to every creature. Some people talk English. Some people are, you know, Chinese. Some people sign. Some people you know, Spanish, whatever. Can try to help them, but those who are in the far regions, like in like Africa or something, what do we do about that? There's a missionary here that God has touched their heart for them to go. And they go. They're willing. But then what do they do? They've got to study and they've got to learn the language of that, of that region so when they meet somebody there, they can explain the gospel in their language and help them to understand and help them to believe on Christ and trust him for salvation. Every creature, every person, every language. Me, myself, you know, I, I can't all alone. But working together... you know, people, you know, becoming missionaries and going to far regions, working together, we, it is possible. When a person becomes saved, now it's their turn because they have the message and they know people, they have their friends, their family, their group. It's, it's their area of responsibility to explain to their people. So I'm here and they're there and, you know, together we're communicating. We're doing this on behalf of God, every person. We are to go to all people. Jesus has all authority and all power. So all sin, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, to every person. Preach the gospel. The gospel is the answer for all sin, any sin and all sin. Every problem, every situation begins where? Every problem begins with sin. The first sin happened in heaven. Satan became prideful and God kicked him out of heaven. And then Satan began working on Adam and Eve. Before Satan got involved, Adam and Eve had not yet sinned. And yet Satan came up and approached Eve and tempted her. And through that process, they both sinned. And through that sin, sin passed upon all of us. So every problem begins where? It begins with sin. Every death is because of sin. But Jesus Christ came here to earth and became a person. He was born. That's why we celebrate Christmas. And he preached the gospel. He preached and healed and taught and suffered and bled and died on the cross. That's when we celebrate Easter, the resurrection. Altogether, this is the gospel. Jesus Christ, 
who lived suffered blood and died and rose again for what? To save you and to save me. His life and his work on the cross was a payment for our salvation. And any person that trusts in Christ for salvation will be saved. And that salvation is eternal. It's forever. What does that mean? It means that my punishment to die and go to hell is gone. Every person has an appointment with death. And after that, the judgment. But for every Christian, they will not die and go to hell. They will be in heaven forever. They, they don't have to go to hell. So remember, that salvation that Christ gives to us is, a, is forever. It cannot be lost. It will never go away. He has all authority and all power for all Christians, for all time, for all the world. He commands us to go to all the people because all have sinned. The gospel is for all, for all. He has all power and all authority for all Christians, all the time, to go to all the world, to all the people because of all sin. The gospel is for all. Do you believe the gospel? Are you willing to preach the gospel to others? Your church, as they send others to preach the gospel, are you involved in that? Are you obeying? He is supreme God and we must obey. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word, the Bible this wonderful verse that emphasizes we need to obey. If there's any person here, anyone who's watching who is not yet saved, please, I pray you'd work in their hearts and help them to get saved today. Help them to understand that we all sin. And because of that, Jesus Christ left heaven and went and died on a cross and rose again for all the world, that any person that trusts in him might be saved. And that salvation is a decision made once that lasts forever. I pray that you'd work in people's hearts, that they would be saved. I pray that you'd work in Christians' hearts, that we would all be willing to be involved in preaching the gospel and also in sending missionaries. Because you've given... Because you have all authority and power and we all need to be involved in preaching the gospel to all people because all have sinned. As it's quiet now, Lord, I pray that you would uh, help us all to think about ourselves and remember. Do you all remember, do each of you remember that time when you would ask Christ to save you, to forgive you of your sin? If you haven't done that yet, you can ask him today and trust in Christ today for salvation. You can. So I encourage you right now to pray. If there's something that we need to talk about, something we need to discuss, maybe it's private, uh, we can do that now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the time we have here today in your house. Thank you so much for the freedom that we have here in America that we can gather together. 
Please, I pray that you would work in all of our hearts. We need your wisdom. We need your grace. We need your power. We need you to lead us. Help us to have hearts that are soft and flexible and willing to follow you. Pray that you would use this gospel is for all. If there are any who are still not saved, anyone who's watching, still not saved, I pray that you'd work in their heart and help them to become saved today and use us to encourage them to do so, that they might be saved, please, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.